Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast, episode number what, Tyler? 32. 32. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed. Is it 32 only? That's just this year, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. And I'm joined by my lovely and talented wife, Miss Southern Shell, rocking her Royal Oak Invitational 2021 hat. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't fresh it? Fresh from Roswell, Georgia, and Mr. Tyler on the board. How's everybody today? Good, good, good. Y'all feeling it? Good. Yep. Feel the fall is in the air, the weather's cooler. It is. It is my favorite time of the year. <laughs> it is. So it's kicking off my favorite time of the year. Fat boy time. It's <laughs> <laughs> when the cold weather and the yeah. food comes out. Fat boy fall. <laughs> Gonna have the hot girl summer. We got fat boy fall. Hunting I'm, season. We got turkey season. <laughs> the turkey eating season, not turkey hunting season. We got gifting season. What else? Football season. All the great seasons happen in the fall. I don't and care candy. What anybody says candy season, Halloween, that kicks it off. Who doesn't like a season that kicks off but giving away candy? I mean, that's fantastic. We got some stuff here. We yeah, talked this yeah. one up on the podcast. Do you want to jump right in and talk maple? I, I'm going to let you take over. I introduced everybody and got it going. See what you thought about that old Miss game. I thought it was great. We won. It's they, a little crazy. Yeah, they had to clear half the fan. I don't know if it was half the student section got cleared out. It was a bunch of them. They were taking them out left and right. Actually, uh, we had a, a, someone come by the office today that was actually at the game, and they said, yeah, it was – they cleared it. took what, They shut it down for about 30 minutes. It, took, least, them, it yeah. took them 30 minutes, and they were just pulling people out. They're prosecuting a lot of those people. They're using oh, really? people's social media, like TikTok accounts, to try figuring out who did stuff, and then – if you do something wrong, do not put it on your social media. <laughs> Man, yeah, but you can't help it. Silly. They didn't. They may not have even put it on there. It could have been Joe Blow two rows up. Oh, putting his yeah, stuff up there and on there, got and you. then they got you. Just everybody, somebody's watching you. You can't get away with nothing anymore. <laughs> I think they found this dude that killed his fiance. Yeah, they did. Or they found some remains. He, what if he? You said a long time ago, if they hadn't found him by now, he's he did. Dead. Yeah, um, I don't know if he's smart enough. If he couldn't have. If he didn't get rid of her where they couldn't find her in no millions kidding. of acres of wilderness out there wherever they were out west, yeah, how do you think he's going to hide? Yeah, exactly. He ain't slick enough to like get another body and make it look like his remains and then be off the grid. I mean, <laughs> he ain't got all that going on. Me and Malcolm have had really in-depth conversations of what you would do if you were off in, <laughs> in a perfect situation to hide a body. Yeah. yeah. Off in the middle of Yellowstone or wherever this uh, was. Was yeah. it Yellowstone? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Grand Teton. Yeah. Teton National Park, I think, wasn't it? You, yeah, I think so. You kill your significant other. What's your next move? What's your next move? <laughs> <laughs> I know we probably shouldn't make fun of that, but it's not. Yeah, yeah it's serious. I feel, yeah. I feel like every couple has that kind of conversation, though. Like yeah. me and Ashley. What are you do doing in this case? <laughs> <laughs> I bother you so much. You have to choke me out. You probably didn't mean to. You didn't wake up that morning thinking, I'm going to yeah, choke you out. I don't think it was. Out. Yeah. I've <laughs> <laughs> had enough. This is her. Day. <laughs> we, <laughs> we are taking it to the limit one more time. Right here. <laughs> is it. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever woke up thinking that? No, never, never. But if I was in his case, I would have just went, oh, y'all come check out these rocks. Oh, man, this is one of you off this big rock right here. Look how far down it is. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. It jumped. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd have called no woman. She jumped. I don't know. She's crazy. Yeah. Y'all see that video where she's going off on the state trooper? I don't know what's wrong. She done clawed me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, then it would have been, you know, dang, she really was crazy. But in this case, he choked her to death. I think. I yeah. Mean, I don't. I'm no joke. Allegedly. Here. Allegedly. That's what. That's what everything's pointing to. Yes. I think it should make you more comfortable that you're willing to tell your significant other what you would do. If, yeah. if Ashley looked at me and Should've said, been. "I don't know," I'd be like, "Okay, all right." <laughs> oh, I, 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 I broke it down. I, 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 I told you, you've been poisoning me, have you? <laughs> That'd be a way to get me to slowly poison me because I think something's wrong with me all the time anyway. <laughs> you're slowly giving me some strychnine or something. One day I killed over and be like, "Dang, well, he he probably lived a good life." Look at him. I, know, I, we I told could, him. We warned him. I could be a good black widow. <laughs> I could see but, that in my cards, yeah. But choke somebody and just throw them right off the road. I know. So everybody's going to find them. I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you watched the Braves last night? 
Heck, man. He stayed up to watch all. Yeah. That's right. They're out. Uh, they got one more game tonight. If they win this game, they're are they in the series? Okay. Yeah. They still got. They still get to come back to Atlanta, even if they. I mean, they're they're ahead in the series three to one. So, how do they do the series? Where do they have a preset location or? No, it's like home and away, home and home away. and away. So so many like they played. So, well, they played two in Atlanta, then they go to the L.A. for three, then they go back to Atlanta for two, okay. if need be. Yeah, yeah, and then they'll do the same. If so they make the it World to the series. series. And I don't know who has home field advantage. It used to. I think it goes by your record. One, no, it used to go by like All Star Game. What did you ever division won the All Star Game had home field advantage for oh. a series? I don't know what it is now, but it may still be that. Yeah, that's a way to I get the All Star Game. The Braves haven't been White. World Series in a long time. So <laughs> I don't care if the Braves. But we going to Atlanta? Ah oh, man, that would be awesome. That would it? be that would be pretty cool. That would be awesome to get to go. My Red Sox aren't looking too good. Yeah, the, the like Astros, the Astros put it on them. But they I beat the both. Yankees though, so that's mm-hmm. no, that <laughs> that's, was a that's big, the win for the season, right? Absolutely. Anytime you can do that as a Red Sox fan, and honestly, they just looked like they had like a not great year, in my opinion. Like they made it this far, which is great, but they're just not—they're not playing as well as we used to, like ten years ago. I, yeah. I didn't have any faith that the Braves were going to be no. uh, go this far in the postseason. They had a five hundred; you know, they were five hundred for a long time. Mm-hmm. Ended up winning their division. They played great ball the latter half of the season. When we got to go, it's like when we when we. I think it was because we went to Atlanta and went to those <laughs> games. They were playing, was it Milwaukee, that series? Yeah. And uh, they turned it around and come on. And they, it was, they were down two games, I want to say, we at won- that series we went to. We saw them lose a game. They lost first game, then yeah. one other two, won that series, and then went on to you know, to start doing really well. The bats came alive. And, man, they're fun to watch. Baseball is fun to watch, it, yeah. especially when you get down to the – Oh yeah, this time. Of year. Yeah, that's my favorite in person. Hockey's fun too, but yeah, yeah, I, I like hockey too. Yeah. I, there's something about going to the game and watching baseball. I mean, it's it 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 can get boring on TV unless there's something on the line. You know, just watching that many games during the season mm-hmm. on an average nights not that much fun. But when you go to the ballpark, it's electric. It's mm-hmm. just something about before it. you know it, it's over. You yeah, know? yeah, it's it goes. Fa- it doesn't seem like it goes fast watching on TV. Yeah. I mean, what I was up to, what was it, 10.30 last night that game went off? Something like that. It's just Which a huge commitment, you. you know, because you're watching, like, multiple, you know, times every, every week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Versus yeah. football so once, games. you know. That's right. But going to a football game, it's very crowded. It's typically a lot of people. It's a lot of shuffling I and parking. I enjoy football and, on TV. I really do like yeah. football on TV. It's It seems like it's made for bars or Home watching use, yeah. of feet. <laughs> people like that and having a party. In-person football, I mean, it's – it's fun, but it's just like you don't. Most of the time you're so far away from the action. And, yeah, you know you don't get the good replays, and you know, I just, I, I, it's hard to get to yeah. the drink. It's hard to get to the yeah. bathroom. It's hard. Yeah, to, it's just a. And you're not really getting like their play by plays or anything like that. Like you, unless yeah. you know a lot about football, you don't really know what the, you know what's going on on yeah. the field. Versus if you're watching on TV, you're kind of getting that. You know. Yeah, yeah that's true. I it's, enjoy it's harder some of the for me to keep up in, yeah. in person. Yeah. Yeah, I like good. You got a good set of announcers. Do it calling the game on TV, man. It's good. I mean, some of them you want to mute, but <laughs> <laughs> looking at you, Tony Romo. I, mean, I, I love like, Tony Romo. <laughs> I like Tony Romo doing. I ain't crazy about Aikman. I had to hear but him talk. I like Tony Romo. Okay. Tony Romo knows what's going on. Yeah. He he's develops fun. the plays before they happen, says, Oh, this is what they're gonna do next. A lot of times they do it. It's it's entertaining to watch Romo do it. He's got a good voice. I'm just salty because last week he was talking about the Patriots and talking like he was talking about the Cowboys, but he's obviously very biased towards the Cowboys. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cowboys are coming on this year. Five and one. They're going to the Super Bowl. Do you think so? <laughs> I gotta place my bet. Calling it here. I've bet. I've placed you gotta a, go through the Cardinals and Rams. I've placed a bet on the Cowboys to be in the Super Bowl. What the past two years? Do you still have that ticket? Did you? You did. No wait. It it wouldn't have been. It for wasn't this for this year. year? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It would have been for the past year. A prop bet. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, we bet. didn't go this. We didn't get to go. We hadn't gone and done our game. Yeah. Yep. It's too late now. I, I don't know. You know, you got next week. We're going to go down to the coast. You could probably slip in one of those sports books and. Put some. That's my the plan. odds are probably pretty good. I mean, you know, right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't gonna, have the, know, the good odds. It's not going to be as much of a gamble, but. So, uh, maple. So, we've been talking about the maple, sir. Yeah. I mean, we, what, what brought it up? Was we doing something with maple? I was, was talking just, about how much I dislike maple. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Russ uh, from Vermont, he listen has. to the podcast. Yeah, he Appreciate to the podcast. that, Russell. He sent us a big box of maple. So, 
today. Real, we're gonna- so what's the story behind this maple syrup? Him and his buddy Lloyd, this is like a family thing. And they've been, I forget, I think in the letter he said it said how many years they've actually been making maple syrup. He's not originally from Vermont, Russett, but I think Lloyd's family is. And they've been, they've been doing it for generations. And I think he's been doing it. I think Russett, he's been doing it for 20 years. Mm-hmm. He's been doing it right. for 20 years, yeah. But they take real maple trees. They do have the buckets on them. I think I said they have some kind of system that hooks up from tree to tree to tree. And the weather has to be right. It has to be cold nights. It has to be warmer days. And I guess it makes that maple sap Specifically flows. freezing nights and non-freezing days. Days is what – and so I'm guessing there's only a few weeks out of the year where it's ideal conditions. So the season lasts for 30 to 45 days. Okay, that's a month. A month yeah. and a half maybe. Yeah. Um, and it's late February, early April. So April, that's time. your – Yeah, that's your, that's your um, season, I guess. Um, 40 gallons of sap makes one gallon of syrup, which is what we have here. So this is that's a not syrup. a gallon, but that's the syrup. Yeah. Yeah. This is a well, pint. This is a pint. Yeah. So we have two pints in a yeah. eight ounce. Yeah. A half pint. So. So 40 gallons of the sap to make a pint. Yeah. I mean, to make a gallon. They of make syrup. 70 gallons. So they boiled 3,000 gallons of sap. Wow. How many trees does it take? Does it say how many trees it takes to get a uh, gallon of syrup? Or how? He said they have about four hundred taps. Dang! But they only have about fifty buckets. Those trees are pumping out some. Yeah. The so rest, I guess they tap the trees and they run them by pipe to the. Yeah. Uh, some of them are using trees. pipelines. Most of uh, most of them are using pipelines. There's only about fifty buckets. Yeah. So they yeah. they're piping them straight to the sugar house, is what it says. I wonder if he sells this. Like, can you buy this, or is this just for their? Uh, so this is something so I found cool interesting. Cool place, refrigerate after opening. I didn't know that. So as a maple tree leaves begins to leaf out, and the color and the flavor and the aromas of the syrup change. To me, that that reminds me of like spring honey, fall honey around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, You know, it tastes different. Um, so yeah, you want to try it? Heck yeah! So we've got three different kinds. This one is the darkest. It's grade A, very dark. Strong tasting honey. I'm going uh, for the lightest. Maple syrup. And what's that? Grade say? A amber. And this one's a grade A dark, robust taste. I didn't know that the competition side of it was so serious. So like, yeah. So I, I've got a question. When you make maple syrup, I know you boil that sap down. Do you add anything to it? Is it just the process of boiling it, taking the water off of it, concentrating it? I mean, they filter it, I yes. guess. They, this is a byproduct right here. So, he's, yeah, he sent some different things. This is drops in the bucket maple sugar. It's like a it's like a raw, think of a raw sugar. That is just the syrup cooked until all the water is removed, leaving only the raw sugar. And it's a powder. So it's basically it. dehydrated. Yeah. This, this maple sprinkles is a byproduct of making the maple syrup, but they use it like for ice cream toppers, and I, I tried taste, that. Yeah, it's, it's like little maple <laughs> delicious rock candy. It's really good. It just melts. It reminds me of crumbs on pralines. So I opened it up and smelled have it. Have you ever made maple pralines? Uh uh-uh. uh This is squid game candy in the shape of a maple. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Does it look like it? Yeah. You got to lick the maple leaf out oh, of the yeah, circle, yeah. or they're gonna shoot you in the back of the head. I think it on squid game. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm opening up the light maple syrup. It doesn't have much of a a smell like I typically associate with a maple. So that's what I thought about. I've tasted the sugar and this the droppings or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the <laughs> the droppings. maple droppings. <laughs> and they don't have like I've never tasted maple in my life apparently. Just flavor maple flavoring. Because it's like Ooh, that's good. Is it so would you compare that to say you could get down on that or I could get down on that. I could put that on a pancake. That's better, really better, good. Better than Mrs. Buttersworth? Yeah. The Canadian stale cracker. Put that on a waffle. Put that on a waffle, dude. All right, so this is just the light. A boot. Here, Tyler needs to try it, too. Oh, man. That don't taste like any maple syrup I've ever I tasted. I know, ever. Life. It's good. It's almost buttery. Wow. It is. That. Now, see, I could see why somebody would eat that on something. <laughs> like the stuff we get when you open it up in the room, <laughs> the whole room smells like maple. I'm going to go straight for the dark. Um, one thing he said was, hold on. 
He's recently replaced refined sugar um, with his maple uh, sugars. So when he does any type of sprinkling or glazing his ribs, he's using a, this type of maple syrup. He Look. said it makes a nice crust, um, and it's great on like a honey baked ham. So oh, you know what? This stuff right here, the droppings that you could put that on the outside of ham, and it would give it that honey baked. You know, when I do, like I use the raw sugar in the raw. Yeah, it would give it like that crunchy because I bet you, I bet you this it'll harden up some, but I bet you it'll. You're talking about the the little candy. So which one does it go? Which one does he use in ribs? What grade? Like he doesn't. Not grade A. But which they're one? all grade A's. They're just yeah. uh, versions of light and dark. It must have to do with when they pull it out, like how far they take it. Why do you keep making the biggest mess with dipping the back of the spoon <laughs> in it? Because I can't get the flavor. It ain't like you can't get all that flavor off that spoon. Watch this. That's how you get all. I can't the get it down out. in there. Oh, you just pour it in it. Oh. You dunked it. <laughs> so this is the that is really good. This is a medium roast. No, that's the dark roast. Oh, the very dark. We skipped the medium. Yeah, I went. We're just trying this two spectrums. I think the amber is what I'm used to. You're used to the the one that you just tried. Yeah, that's the one my mother in law always. Man, ordered. Russ, I ain't joking. I don't know if y'all sell this stuff or what y'all do with it, but that's liquid gold. It's so good. That is really good. Would you use it to cook with? I see. You know. Do you know how we've been talking about they've been using maple in things? Do you think they're using yes, more of this style maple? They have to be. I can see that being very, very good in a wrap or in a barbecue because it doesn't have an artif- It doesn't have that flavor I associate. Yes. Faking. That's, I guess. That's I guess smell. it was fakiness. Yeah. Wow. You even going to open the other one, or are you just going to take it home? <laughs> Here, we'll take them all home. Man, that's good. I know it's really good. I want you to do a ham using a ma- like a maple. I could do that. A maple, maple glazed, ham. maple glazed, an authentic maple glazed ham. Yeah, yeah. So this whole time, y'all thought you hated maple syrup, but it turns out you're just up at maple. Yeah, syrup. Yeah, we're just up at <laughs> maple snobs. We didn't even know it. <laughs> I was just like prejudging. I mean, if all of it tastes like that, I don't want none of it. All these northerner jokes, and they all comes to a head right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those dang southerners don't know nothing about no maple. We That's sure really don't. good. You've, yeah. Russ has changed my mind about maple. He has single hand. Thank you, Russ. This is I why really you don't. I really appreciate it. Like, you, you don't be judging anything. Don't be touch. Till you, you know, I've always said that. Don't knock it till you try it. Yeah. I've and, done and that be all willing. my life. <laughs> And be willing Some to try. Some things I probably shouldn't have tried. <laughs> <laughs> don't be willing to, uh, don't assume you don't like anything, you know? Yeah. There's be some stuff to... I'll put my foot down on. Like what? Uh, What's a hard, no, I'm not trying that. Never have or won't do it again either way. Just n- not going back down that road. Organs. A lot organs. Of organs. Like brain. What about you? Um, tried liver the other day, and you liked it, or gizzard? I did try liver and gizzard the other day, and it was—I didn't. I've been missing out. See, never knew. But I just—I'm hard. I have—I think it's a mental thing. So some things I just not going like. I'm just not going to try it. So on that same topic, did y'all see that Joe Rogan posted that he uh, always eats the liver mm-hmm. of like cows and stuff like yeah. that because it's yeah. really good. And it's yeah. very nutrient. The heart. They're big on eating the heart. Yeah, like meat eater does that. They want to. They, it's like supposed to be. I'm, I'm going to try that this year. I'm going to try some venison heart. Some Are you going to prepare Mark, it? Mark did it last year. We shot one. He took it home, and him and Brian grilled it up. Yeah, I'm just going. to Yeah, I won't try it this year. Uh, if you clean it, you wash it. You yeah. would probably not even know it's heart. Did they like grill it, slice it, eat it? I think they. Or did they cut it? it. I think okay. they fried it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I'm going to cook it a little bit in butter. I'm down. I don't know if there's anything. I mean, maple syrup was on my it used maple, to be on yeah. my list. No, it's <laughs> I never not. tried maple syrup like that. That's amazing. I'm really. I mean, that's a game change. I think so too. My, yeah, I think so too. Um, I, but thank you, Russ. I mean, that might be better than Blackburn. I bet it'd be good on a biscuit with some butter. <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to make pancakes for <laughs> Saturday morning <laughs> breakfast. Take some maple syrup to hunting camp. Let's go and. Um, you better not let Jamie get that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be putting it in his coffee. Yeah, yeah. That man, that would be good in coffee. I could see it. 
Just a dab, like one of them little maple. Yeah, that'd be good. Like you know those little coffee rock mm-hmm. candy stirs. I don't know what we're gonna do these squid games. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this past weekend, we competed at Royal Oak at the Invitational. We did. That was a fun time, man. They yep. put out, they put on a good contest. That was a lot of fun. So they we invited so many of their ambassadors. How many was it? Nearly forty, something like that. Yeah, I can I tell you. I, I got a, the results pulled up. We uh, it was a it was a SCA contest. We had to we had to go 34. on Thursday. We had to go on Thursday. We showed up there. I don't know. We got there about two thirty, three three thirty, something like that. Yeah. Dropped our trailers. Had to go do a little bit of recording because they were working on um, a show or something like that. Or, yeah. Is that were, the day you recorded content. with Tuffy? No, that was the next day. Okay. That day I just had to go over to that pavilion and answer some questions, and they did some rapid-fire stuff to get some, some responses. And yeah, there was just like 45 was minutes. Content. 45 yeah. minutes sitting down, yeah. And then we went uh, – we were tired. We got up so early and left. We left. Man, what time did we leave? 5.30? 6, 6 No, it wasn't that early. It was 6. I think we were on the road at 6.15, something like that. It wasn't. Whatever it was, it was early. It seemed early. <laughs> I got up I got up early that day. I still had stuff to get ready. Oh, yeah. We definitely got up. Anyway. Then, so we got on the road, and uh, Friday night, we went to the hotel, decided to go get some dinner. And I, I, now, this is a chain restaurant. And I, but I'd never been to one. It's called Pompadour, right? Pompadours. Pompadours. And if you have ever see a Pompadours, and I know there's one between Dallas and Fort Worth, because I've seen that one. That's where, oh, I want to go there someday. Heard good things about it. I think there's one at the airport in Dallas. But they have one in Atlanta, like, cross, like right beside our hotel. You could walk to it, just right there in the next parking lot. I said, we'll go there. It had plenty of seating, you know. Oh, yeah, it was a big, nice, comfortable, yeah. so there was, you know. Like, ten of us? Yeah, I think probably. there was eight yeah, yeah somebody, it's a big group. Ate that. And man, their food was amazing. It was good. We had, we started out with the calamari, and it was a real deal fried calamari with the peppers, and the little lemon dipping sauce. They even had the, the little bodies and little yeah, crispy and, layers. Yeah, it wasn't just, it wasn't just rubber bands. Yeah. We had, we had a uh, fondue. Was it like a crab meat and sea, uh, lobster crab fondue, I think? Mm-hmm. Um, the bread was, that was awesome. I had a spinach artichoke. I didn't get that to try the good. spinach artichoke dip. But then I had one of the better salmons that I've ever had in my life. And it's so weird that you ordered salmon. I normally don't, but I've been trying to eat more fish. So I said, you know what? They had all this delicious fried stuff, and I, you know, I saw this on the <laughs> menu. I went with the salmon. And it's, it sounded amazing. It was like it was one of their featured recipes on the menu. That's why I did it. But man, it was like crispy salmon. I forget all it was glazed with. And it was, it was dynamite. You had. Um, you remember what you had? I thought it was snapper. It was. But it had a brown butter lemon sauce. Ooh, that brown butter lemon sauce made it. And I, I got was on spinach. Like, on top. Mom, you got spinach on the side. Mom was on top of some sautéed spinach. That was good. And it too. had grilled shrimp over the top of it and crab meat. And that was really good. I had crab meat on top Yours of it. This was a lemon too. brown butter sauce. Yeah. I want to so. recreate that lemon brown butter sauce. It was excellent. Yeah. And for a chain restaurant, you never know. <sighs> You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. yeah, it was almost like a little bit slightly higher than a regular chain, you know? Uh, yeah. It wasn't like your Olive Garden. It, wasn't, it, was, it, wasn't, it was a higher uh, quality. Red Lobster. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get delicious <laughs> cheese biscuits. But the portions were amazing. Uh, some some of, the, some of the people got uh, pasta dishes that that looked really, they said they were phenomenal. Everything, everybody wanted to go back. It yeah. was so good. So um, this is just, if you like to eat. <laughs> Check out Papa Do. We were happy with it. Everybody yeah. was. And we're a, bunch cheap. Of, we're a bunch of picky people. Yeah. That group. Every, yeah, for everybody to be happy with their entree, that's, you know, usually seafood's one of the things, if you get it done right, it's amazing. Yeah. I've had some bad seafood. It's not, Atlanta's not necessarily known for their seafood. I don't know, man. Atlanta's got every all kinds of cuisine. You know. It's really a foodie town if you know what you're doing there. There's a ton of great stuff. We There's, went to a Cajun restaurant. Yep. Yep. Just kind of lucked into it one years ago. And it was, was, that? it was just up Alpharetta, just right up from Roswell, all right in that north part of Atlanta. Yeah. Yep. It was really good there, too. Um, So we cooked on a new stick burner. Or you cooked on your new stick I burner, did. your outlaw. I ain't got a name for that one yet. I got to come oh, up with that yeah. one. Oh, yeah. But uh, I don't think social's seen that one yet. Uh-uh. No, no. It's in It's test brand new. It's brand out there new. in the parking lot, though, on the it trailer. Is. First contest we cooked on it. Against some of the best brisket cooks in the country, got fourth place. It's that good of a pit. 
I didn't do nothing. We just put some sticks in it, let it go, and let the pit do the work. You said I didn't even cook a brisket. You didn't know what I did to it. But, but chicken was good. We did. We did. A, I have actually thoughts did Eric brisket. Lee's chicken recipe, and I was that's yeah. the first time I've like cooked his recipe. I, I watched a video that night. I said, "Man, I never cooked chicken in a competition <laughs> on a stick burner." So you watched your own. video. So I watched my own video. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "All right, I'm taking notes." I said, like, "Hey, he did it. No, nothing to the trim. You actually trimmed it up. I said, Chell, don't do too much. Just square it up. I didn't take the knuckle off. Pull that. And I think I'm gonna do away. even less next time. Next time, I put it in a pan." Seasoned it, injected it, did all our stuff. Um, chicken was decent. I think it was, it was 14th, wasn't it? It was a little spicy. Yeah. It, it got, I, I don't know how it got spicy, but it got spicy. I put a little something under the skin I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. Like it had some chipotle in it. It was hot. It got a little hot. Yeah. Um, But yeah, the brisket, I was a little worried about the brisket. It did not seem like that great of a brisket when y'all were slicing it and boxing it. No, it kind of stood out straight like a diving board. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. And if you. But I knew, like, when I was feeling it. But you were at one end, and yeah. I told Waylon, like, so, all right, man, there's going to be one end of this brisket that's still a little tight, but the, all the rest of it felt perfect. So you're going to concentrate on these slices. And when he got down to there and he took one of the slices and just kind of let it fall over on itself on the board and it bend but didn't break and it had pull, and it was, I was and, like, yep. The flavor was really good. Eight of those slices, all we need to box. Let's go. They, I was pretty confident in that. They provided the meat. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. showed up. We got our meat on Friday. Friday. Yeah. So what we get? 16 pieces of chicken. Mm-hmm. A thigh. I don't remember the brand. Um, we got three Cheshire pork butts. No, we got two Cheshire, two Cheshire pork, pork butts, butts and three Cheshire spare uh, St. Louis cut ribs and one Snake River Farms black brisket. And everybody got the same thing. Well, mm-hmm. you know what? Everybody didn't get the same thing. Some of them had uh, Sam's Club meat. It was Mark next door. He had Sam's Club butts. I mean, everything was the same except butts. I guess they didn't have enough butts. Yeah. But it was still really, really, really good stuff. Decent meat. Everybody has a level playing field. I kind of like that. Yeah, I do too. I don't mind it. You're going to provide the meat and we all start with the same thing. You make sure that everybody, nobody's cheating. That's it. That's the ticket. Yeah. Um, there's there's been a few of those contests. I forget what they call them. They have a name for them. Um, how is trimming on site? Because normally you trim at home. Yeah, nothing and take to it. Nothing to it. The only, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, it, it's fine trimming on site. But the only reason why I don't like doing it is because what if I've got I because we're having to bring our own meat. So usually you're always having to buy it beforehand. So if you go buy meat on Monday Tuesday, then you're holding it in home in your refrigerator. Then you're icing it down and traveling with it. What if something's bad? You didn't know it. Yeah. At least if I buy it at home, I can open it up. And if my chicken's ruined or my brisket's got too much, you know, or pork, but it, it can happen. I've had it happen. Oh, yeah. Clear the house out. And so I want to be able to run back to the store and get something else. If you're at a contest, you're kind of in the dark. You hope you can go to a local store and find something. But oftentimes or not, you're going to be out of luck. Um. So that's why I always say trim at home. And, I mean, when you're in a trailer, it makes it easier because you got AC and you got running water. You got everything you need. But if you're out under a tent and, you know, you don't bring all that stuff, it's harder. If it's, you know, 90 degrees outside and you're messing with chicken and it's sliding all over the place. And, Ugh, you know, that's the worst. There's nothing worse than that. Um, there was also a state contest on Friday night. An yeah, NCAA. NCAA State. Wayland mm-hmm. did that. He picked out some steaks. They were they, The ribeye steaks they had were awesome. Yeah, they were. They were really good. And then after the steak contest, they dropped off everybody um, with, I think it was a case of steaks or 20 yeah. steaks. No, it was 10. To every every team had 10 steaks. And so we all kind of cooked our you dinner. Had to cook. They, they kind of sprung that on us. <laughs> I didn't know we were having to cook 10 extra steaks. Because most people didn't even bring, you know, like we brought one PK grill. Yeah. And then Mark just brought his little C4, M grill C4. Yeah. And it's really only meant to cook one steak. And so they gave us like a box of buckhead beef. And the one we had said ribeye drops. Okay. Drop steaks. So I wanted to talk to you about those ribeye yeah. drop steaks. Um, have you ever heard of a ribeye drop steak before? No. Okay. I don't know if they dropped them off the dock or at the processing <laughs> plant or where they dropped them. So I did some research on it because I was real curious about it. Yeah. What is it? Um, it's also, it's known as a butcher's cut, which is a cut that the butcher did not think he could sell, so he took Takes it home. it home, yeah. yeah. Well, like, it should have been known as a butcher's secret because these steaks are amazing. They really were. <laughs> they were really good. They so were really marble Most so. of them were 
so uh, yeah, everybody small. knows a whole rib a whole ribeye. So you got one end that's up closer to the chuck. That's where all that good spinalis is. And they can't sell the first few inches of it because you can't cut a good steak out of it. That's the drop portion. The back end, it starts telling off to the strip loin. And so it gets more like a strip steak at that point because it loses its spinalis. You don't have that the other center, kind of the small eye muscle in it. It's just a lean, it's that top biggest muscle in the loin. So that's where you get your strips. And that's what it is on the back end. You can't sell that piece either as a ribeye. It's not quite a strip. It's not quite a ribeye. So they drops and they sell them, I guess, at a bargain. <laughs> well, it says these ribeyes are left when they cut the large bone in the tomahawk ribeye. I could see that. So you get extreme marbling and flavor that's comparable to yeah. a more expensive steak. Oh, yeah. They weren't, they, I mean, we took a bite of one. We had to. I didn't oh, eat one really for dinner good. that night. But they looked really good. You could tell, you know, they were yeah, they marbled. Yeah, cut, and, man, marbled up. It was good, good meat. They just weren't a traditional looking ribeye. We put them on the um, social on Instagram. And yeah, stuff. On, on we got. Yeah, them. so we got there and they told us we were going to cook those. And I was like, man, we don't have time to do that. We got to trim. It's still on our timeline that that we came up with all off. So what and, did you do? Um, bowled them in water. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is something new that I started first time ever. I broke down. I bought me. Um, an Anova sous vide. It's the which one did I buy? The my, uh, Nano. Got it off Amazon, hundred something bucks, whatever. The reason why I bought it is because Mark and a lot of these guys, and he got it from some guys up there in Indiana. They've been using these sous vides to keep their sauces and um, glazy glazes and everything, you know, wrap juice, all this warm in a contest because we're always running a hot eye got a little pot we're having to put something in it warm it up it gets you, too you hot walk around go best with the smoker do whatever it boils over or you got to dump it out clean the pot because you're switching to a real you know pork you know something and you got to go beef or whatever but if and you- it's just a pain and some people use these triple crock pots or whatever well they started using uh, an immersion circulator whatever a sous vide and it basically has like a little plastic tank like a like a camber style tank that's got a little lid that snaps on it, and it's got a little cutout for your little machine, sous vide machine to snap on. And you just set it down in your sink, put some water in it, use glass jars, put all your sauces, glazes, wrap juice, whatever you want to put in that, set it on 160, and it holds a perfect temp all day. We put it in there like that morning we got up, lit the pit, got our ribs seasoned up. After ribs went on, powered we put up it, that CV. Powered up that CV. Yeah. And that's how I held all my stuff warm. It was worked awesome. So the CV is pretty much just a water circulator with a heater. That's all it is. Yeah. It moves the water and holds and moves it to where everything's kind of a constant temperature and it heats yep. that water up and you put it in there in a bag. Well, these steaks, so as we were sitting there that night at the cook's meet and they told us they were giving these steaks, I was like, dang, how are we going to cook all these? I said, man, we got that sous vide. <laughs> so why don't we sous vide them? And I was like, man, we didn't bring a vacuum sealer because you got to seal the steaks up. And me and Mark are thinking, it's like, well, we can probably just get them in a bag, put a few of them in there, hang them over the side and clip them, kind of do the water displacement where you push all the air out and it's kind of clipped over the side, it'll work. But when they gave them to us, they were all individually cryovac And I said, this is perfect. We're not going to season them. We're not going to bust that cryovac. We're going to drop them down in the sous vide. We did um, 125 degree water. About two hours, 30 minutes, two and a half hours. Was that how long it was? I thought it was less time than that. No, no, it was about two hours, 30 minutes circulating the water. And when I pulled them out, I think you got a picture of it. I do. They weren't pretty. It looked like, if you've ever seen. they weren't pretty. If you've ever seen oven cooked uh, prime rib, (laughs) when you slice it in the middle. Yeah. How the meat, you know, just medium rare. I mean, it looked good, but see, they, these didn't have a lot of fat, so you didn't see any white fat or anything like that. It was just lean-looking prime rib meat. Yeah. And I was like, well. It was kind of a pinkish gray. A little. Yeah, I wouldn't have just wanted to eat it. Yeah. But it still it wasn't just like off-putting. Like, I've seen some of them come out. Super oh, yeah, yeah. And so we seasoned it up like we did our steaks. What did you some season? Mark's prime beef, a little hot rub. That was it. But and no Woodshire. Put them, up, put them on there and then let them set on the counter for, I don't know, 15 minutes. We still had the PK go. I think, why don't they throw a little more charcoal on there? Duck fatted the grates back up. You know, we put all 10 of them steaks on the grate on a PK at one time. And you got a picture of it. It was packed up there. 
And we did like, you know, um, it wasn't long. It was like a minute 30. And then by the time we got them all on there, we timed a minute 30. We just flipped them over opposite way. So your lines were all going the same way on both sides. Mm-hmm. Another minute 30, flip them back over and turn them. And it made the cross on them. And man, <laughs> them dudes looked amazing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know how we didn't. Where did Wyland finish? Like 12th or 13th in the. I thought he got 11th. He was, he was in the, you know. He was in the running. Middle yeah, pack. Yeah. yeah. He didn't get a call, but he wasn't. Yeah, he was 11th, I think. He was right outside the Right outside, the, wherever the it was. But uh, they, they won the people's choice. <laughs> Man, them things look good. They looked really good. We, after they come out, we put them all in one pan, hit them with some melted Kerrygold butter and just a bump of thumb grinder, that prime beef. And they so tasted They really were so good. good, you had to pull one out and try it. I, I was just, like, dang. I just cut a little tail off yeah. one. I mean, you could tell. I could still tell that it had been sous vide cooked because it wasn't like they were grilled the whole time. Yeah. But it was not a bad steak. And that's exactly what I've said the purpose of a sous vide is. If you're cooking a bunch of steaks or, you know, you got a lot of meat and you want to hold it at a certain temperature, you could have – that's easily been done. It would have been no problem. And it wasn't. That was – I mean, I would do that again. Yeah, if you were cooking yeah. a bunch of steaks. They remind – so those steaks were – the way they looked, they reminded me of like fillets with the ribeye tail. That's kind of how the best way I could sort of describe how they looked. But they yeah, were, yeah. They were nice and thick. Now, Waylon, so they went over to the dinner. I didn't go to the dinner because I was having to do some stuff with the meat. And they said, y'all just bring something back for me. It was like a potluck dinner. All the teams had to bring something. And then they were providing the steaks that we cooked. <laughs> <laughs> and so they did it in shifts, too, which was pretty cool because it was, you know, you don't want to get over there and get crowded. So. Yeah. Um, so, so on the shift that Waylon, did you, you you went over there. We were all in the same Yeah, I went over there and made time. Plate. He said, man, I don't know what they did with them steaks, but I don't even think they put them out. Because they he took pictures of all these steaks. It's like, man, what did people do to them? It's like I don't know. They weren't that pretty. Yeah, other people. Not look I don't want to call it. I don't. I don't know who's in anybody's was. But who cooked what? I'm just saying we won that one. <laughs> if you had to judge that really one, the people steaks. I'm telling you what happened. They were like, "Oh, we keeping these for ourselves." <laughs> Those were going home. Yeah. <laughs> You'll fit, fit, uh, feed the execs with these. <laughs> yeah. Um, we did uh, for the potluck. Something I thought was funny was Jamie and Mark, Swine Life, they did uh, their apple pie baked beans, yeah. which is a great recipe. We use it a lot for catering. Oh, yeah. Um, he cooked them at home, and then he uh, he, had him, he vacuum sealed, he vacuum sealed yeah. them in bags and brought them over in vacuum sealed bags. And that's a great way to transport stuff when you're catering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so when he got there, when it got time to cut it, he cut them open, poured them in a in a pan, put them on the pit, let them heat up. Good to go. Yeah, but that ain't what he did, though. <laughs> what did he do? He, he dropped them in the sous vide, too. <laughs> warmed them up in the sous vide. See, it's great for that, too. <laughs> hey, they were already fully cooked. All yeah. he had to do was heat them back up. He was going to do it and had to fire the pit up. So instead of firing the pit up, dropped they put, them in the dropped them in the sous vide. Yeah. Um, we did... Uh, Pimento and cheese, three ways. Yes, and it was amazing. It was really you good. Had some left, you had you had left a little bit of that at home, and let me try it. it was a jal- the jalapeno, the white jalapeno pimento cheese was my favorite. Then the the more traditional one was really good, too. It was really mm-hmm. creamy. And then I did a smoked Gouda that you didn't get to try. Yeah. A smoked Gouda cream cheese, pimento cheese. Yeah, they were real good. Served them with some of the pickles we do. And- yeah, we did pickles and crackers, and it was just a little. Did you take a picture of that by chance? I did. Yeah, you need to, did you put it on social media? I did. Oh, okay. That was because that looked really good. Yeah. There wasn't any of that left. When Wayland said he got over there, he said there was no pimento cheese in sight. Mm-hmm. What happened to it? So it Saturday, went with the steaks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, other people said that they were trying it. So yeah. um, so Saturday, Russell Wright came over and helped y'all. Yeah, from Wright on Q. Yeah. Steak Princess's daddy. Yep. And, and Miss Carrie, and she came too. Um. How do you think your cook went? That was your first KCBS cook on your new pit. Was that your first one in the black trailer? No, we did Galax. That's true. And That's we true. did the Shriners, I think, last year. For, I think we did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. That, But it went smooth. It was first stick burner timeline. It felt really awkward not having anything on at midnight. We had, I don't know what time it was so when we the, went to bed. We, we tried to go to bed at like 10 because we knew we had an alarm set at 4.30. To get up and watch the pit, but usually the contest, if we're in a trailer, being Wayland, you know, 10 o'clock, we still got a couple more hours. We're going to put meat on and then go to bed for five or six hours. 
So we just had to lay there and watch TV <laughs> and Mark's back there trying to sleep. And I'm like, man, there's, I done had a few whiskey drinks. And so it was it was a little – I wasn't ready to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I but, woke up the next day and you had texted me like, hey, what you doing? And you know. <laughs> like, you were real desperate. You were willing to text me from the hotel. <laughs> but, no, we uh, – so we, we set our alarm for four thirty. Got up, but I already had the pit ready to go. You know, I had the, the charcoal in there and a couple of tumbleweeds, and all I had to do is step outside and light it. Well, I got up, you know, slipped my shoes on, went to the back of the trailer. And Russell's already out there and got the, he said the pit's lit because he was uh, he came from the hotel. Yeah. And so once he got that going, I mean, we got our ribs out of the cooler, and got the meat out. Thirty minutes later, that pit was three fifty, and we put the brisket on, checked the pit back butts go on and the ribs come on a little hour later 7 30 you're wrapping and then it's like man we're caught back up where we normally be you yep. know so it was and then it's was just like, chicken and you just go it. right you through go right it. through it and so it's really simple i mean the timeline was really easy do you like uh, it better i like the smoothness that that outlaw cooks it does something different to the texture of what i've been cooking on it just what you sneaking in over there a little maple candy <laughs> That's when you said, I don't know what this is. It's coming to back. You know, but I see you. <laughs> but yeah, I, lo- I do that like one's it. Going home I do like cooking on it. I'm not going to lie. The flavor's good. They're easy to run. Um, you know, you just put a stick on it about every 45 minutes, get your bed of coals. We added a little bit of lump charcoal, like when we wrapped, just to keep the coal bed going. Started checking it back when it comes time to glaze. It settled in about 225, and we just kind of let it die down, but it had plenty of heat on it to glaze everything, and, man, it went it went really smooth. Between all- that and the sous vide, hey, I got <laughs> you got it excited made. to cook, yeah. You're not even yeah. really. <laughs> yeah, it ain't really do it much. Just letting it go, throwing a little seasoning on something and putting it in a box. Um, we have developed a serious problem in the trailer bathroom. <laughs> the lines, did <laughs> I don't know what our issue is. I'd... So describe the describe the issue. If you've ever been to the Memphis Zoo or any zoo, or the, well, I don't know if any zoos like it because most of those animals are out in the open, but it used to be years ago as a kid, the Memphis Zoo's cat, where the big cats were, was just this building. And they had some cages where they'd let them outside someday, right on the outside, but it wasn't a very big cage. It was like a dog kennel-sized cage. <laughs> and all those cats were mainly inside. And the whole place smelled like what you think a cat house would smell like. <laughs> a big You've cat house. You've been around tomcats when they get to fighting or spraying or whatever they do. That's what was Imagine that on. on a big scale. Imagine that on a bigger <laughs> scale inside your barbecue trailer and bathroom. It doesn't really come out of the bathroom, but something's going on with our vent. Or I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's a bad, bad, bad situation. I got, I got somebody on it today. <laughs> By somebody, I mean Mark. <laughs> He's on hazard pay today. <laughs> I don't know. Happy about it? Oh no, I don't blame him. I, I, he deserves a really, really big bonus. Like he said, he needs like a Corvette or something. <laughs> like, so like, it at first. Whenever we up. hit it big, I'm taking care of Mark Wiggins for handling the lines, dude. Problem. He's got. He's on my list. So got to take care of Mark. So the problem first arose when we went to Galax. And we were there yes. for more than three or four days. Same, same yeah. amount of time, Thursday through Sunday. Okay. Same anyway, it got really bad there, and we yeah. thought we had fixed the problem. Thought we'd fixed it. Thought the pi- exhaust pipe had gotten clogged some kind of way from overuse, and it was pushing the whatever it is. It did not work. It did not <laughs> fix it. I don't know if the vents did- coming back up through the shower, if it's coming through the hand sink, but somehow it's getting vented right back to the bathroom. It's not coming up through the toilet. <clears throat> when we say vent, we're talking just <clears throat> just the smell, not the... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not, yeah. not any bodily fluids or anything. It's just the odor. So it's not coming through the water. So it's definitely, there's like a little hand sink right beside it, and there's a, a, a stand-up shower with a floor drain. And none, none of those should be tied to the black tank at all. I, so we've got we've got a major issue. <laughs> I don't know if something's crawled up in there and died, if there's a wild animal living on top, or I don't know. But there's, it's definitely that got that line cage. <laughs> it's got to be essence. fixed. It has to be fixed, or we're boarding up. The it door. hits you. It hits you hard, right in yeah. the back of your nostrils. Oh man, it's not. I've, I've been a 
job site border john is not that bad i know <laughs> so i don't know what it is what y'all been eating probably that pompadour's <laughs> 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 no, but it doesn't smell like that's, poop. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a poop smell at all. It's not. Yeah, that's not what it is. It's got We're not, a lot of ammonia yeah, to it. Got, yeah. Have you ever smelled death fluid? Like hot death fluid? Uh-uh. Well, does it smell like that? It's, it's got that urea smell. Yeah, to it, you know, it's, it's real. It's not pleasant. It's not pleasant at all. <laughs> You don't have to worry about people loitering in your bathroom. No, no, you're not going there to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> you need a full respirator. That's what Jamie said. He said, I'll work on it. You got to buy one of them hazmat suits. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to see. Mark was out there filling the tanks up and taking it to the dump site and going to see if they can figure out something. Maybe we need some stronger chemicals from I don't know, from Maldi. I don't know what it is. Call Cap- up the zoo and see what they use. <laughs> what do you got? Yeah, a big cat cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've since tore down the, the now, it, now. Now, ironically it's really enough, nice. it's a restaurant. The, 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 the old <laughs> the cat, cat house, house is now the restaurant at the zoo. <laughs> that used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. it is. Crazy. What's it called? Is it called the cat house restaurant? It is. Yes, cat it house is. cafe. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm telling you, it used to be. I thought those burgers looked weird. <laughs> <laughs> Got some exotic pizza going on there. <laughs> After watching oh. that Joe exotic pizza thing, you'll never eat at the, the zoo, zoo again. again. <laughs> Heck no. <laughs> so this week you did a barbecue beef. I did barbecue barbecue chuck roast. As a matter of fact, yep. what it was. And by that barbecue, I kind of cooked it like brisket style to where I seasoned it a lot like I did that comp. I really did that because I wanted to see if that outlaw would cook. The whole the whole thing was like, I knew the beef would be delicious, but I just cooked that brisket, and I was like, I'm going to do some of the same stuff I did to see how even the color that that patio outlaw would do compared to the new one on the barbecue trailer. Yeah. So I positioned it in the grill kind of the same way, let the smoke roll over it, seasoned it a lot. Pretty much the same way. <laughs> Prime beef hot rub. That's all I put on my comp brisket. It was super easy. But I did the same way. Um, hit it with prime beef pretty good, heavy, hot rub just for color, put it on there. And I bought a big chuck rush from Kroger. Yeah, it's a pretty big one. It was probably three one. and a half pounder. Put it on there, started hitting it with the hickory smoke. Um, it was about two hours. It had beautiful color on the outside. Dropped it off in the pan. With Is some, that when you decide, like, okay, it's done? I'm going by color, really. Okay. It's not really, you know, you want to start seeing it kind of turn a little darker on the edges. But it's got a nice bark set on top. There's going to be some moisture still coming out of it. But as long as that color's kind of set, it's going to give my brisket that look. So chuck roast, I really I knew it was going to tear it apart. I didn't really care. But I wanted to see what it would do to beef doing that on that patio like that. Could you um, use a different cut of beef to get this pulled barbecue beef that you were going for? Um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could. there's a lot of different roasts you could use to do it. This The chuck's probably the best for me. Why because it has the, the most fat content. It's got the marbling in it. It's made up some different muscles, the way they slice that shoulder up. But it's you know it's just got the the intermuscular fat is what gives it the tenderness. So a lot of times, if you use a leaner cut of roast, you can still cook it to where it pulls, but it's going to be stringier. It's not going to have as good a you know flavor because it don't have the fat. That chuck roast is just perfect for it. Um, um, and how much did you pay for that chuck roast? Just I think it was twenty bucks, twenty five bucks for. Both of them? Because it was a two-pack. No, the two-pack was 50. We cut one in the crock pot for dinner. (laughs) Yeah. I should have cooked both of them, actually, because that would have been really good. But I was just trying to do it for the video. It was really experimental. Yeah. It was barbecue chuck roast. So once I got the color right, I'd set it over in a pan, and I had mixed me up a beef um, au jus or beef, you know, jacked up beef broth is all it was. What what was it? I started with big old heaping tablespoon of the – Roasted garlic flavored uh, better than bouillon beef. I think it was roast beef with garlic or something, whatever it was. It was one of those little jars. Big tablespoon in a pot, two cups of water. I did a splash of Johnny's French dip liquid concentrate. I didn't measure it at all. If I had to guess, it's probably a tablespoon, maybe uh, eh, two, two teaspoons, tablespoon, something like that. And then I did a couple squeezes of, is it the better than bouillon brand or? Beyond Burger. Beyond- no, Kitchen. Ki- uh, Kitchen Assassin. Kitchen Assassins. Is the uh, brand. But I just used the beef base. Kitchen, I didn't use the, the burger. I used the beef base. So I just did a good squeeze of that. I was just trying to beef it up. Yeah. 
I brought that to a boil or, you know, a pretty good simmer. And then, so basically you just took a beef broth and I made added me a, a yeah, concentrate Yeah, I made, me a, I made me a jacked up beef liquid. <laughs> That's what went in that pan with that brisk, uh, chuck roast. Did you add any seasonings? Nope. I didn't do nothing. Onions. I just tasted it. I was like, dang, I had to dip a sandwich in that. It's good. Yeah. You know, so I knew it was going to give it some beefy flavor. You could have put some onions or something in it, some pepper, some garlic, whatever you wanted if you don't yeah. want to, and then strained it and just got the flavors in there, but I didn't really need it. But I just want a beef juice. So basically, you just need to take get beef broth and doctor it up. Yeah, yeah. To however you want. That's pretty much what I did. I made my own yeah. beef broth, but you know, you get beef broth in a can or cardboard thing. It don't have any flavor. It's you know, it's just watery, a little bit of beef flavor, but it ain't much. It ain't like making it from concentrate like that. Yeah, you can get it as strong as you want it. And that's what I was doing for. I was, you know, and it tasted really, really good. Like I would use that on a beef sandwich or something. Oh yeah, it was delicious. And so. I took actually I did use that in my sauce. I didn't pour. I just I poured it up to the I don't know. It was a little bit over halfway up the chuck roast in the pan. So you don't want you don't the want to submerge it. Okay. You want to leave the top exposed. So if you think about going halfway to not quite three quarters up on the meat in the pan. So if it was a brisket flat or something, you wouldn't come up that high. I covered the pan. Put you know I put a probe in it. Covered the pan, and I was taking it up to as high as it would go. And I think that one stalled out. I started checking at 200, wasn't quite tender, you know. You wanted to, So is there a target temp when you're talking? When you're talking chuck beef. roast, pull beef, fall apart your target temp. I mean, I don't know what, you got to go by feel. So I was cooking about 300, sometimes they creep up to 325. I wasn't really worried about that. But I wanted it to, when I put that probe in it, it just felt like nothing was there. I was just going through some warm, you know, hot knife through warm butter, no resistance. So what would you say your first target temp is? Like, at what point do you start? Start checking? About yeah. 200. So around 200 degrees. But you probably you still had 35, 45 more minutes to go Yeah. to get it up to. But I, do you think every cut's going to be different? Every chuck roast? They have been when I've cooked them. Some of them are ready at 208. Some of them are ready at 210. This one was 213. Yeah. Final. I don't even know if I showed that on the video, but that's where I wanted it to go. And once I knew I felt that, it was like, oh, this is. But, but I showed, I know for a fact I showed how that probe went in, what it looked like going in the meat, what yeah. I was trying to feel, uh, not just in one place either, all over that roast. But, that I mean, you could do it with two forks. You could take two forks right there in the pan, just give it a little tug, and if it's separating, it's ready. If you can pick it up with your hand and you can tell it's going to do it, it's ready. At that point, all you got to do is get it off and let it rest a little bit. And don't throw all that juice away that's in that pan either. That stuff's black gold. <laughs> I mean, it was delicious. It is good. I put on some gloves after it's set, kind of shredded it up, picked out some of the, there's going to be some thicker connective fat in the yeah. chuck roast. Put that to the side, but it, it probably made uh, that three and a half pound roast. I bet it made two good pounds or a little more of meat. Yeah. It's a lot. There's still some of it in the fridge. Oh, it's but delicious. It was better so you pulled day. it, you pulled it and then you Added just a little bit of the juice that had come out of the pan. Yeah. Drizzled it back over the top, kind of moistened it up. Yeah. Then I made sandwiches with it. But you also took a little bit of the juice that you had reserved from when the you initial pan. Yeah. Yeah. From just putting it together on stove top, 50 50 with my barbecue sauce, the barbecue sauce. You can do it with any barbecue sauce. And it made the best it sauce for so beef because it had that beefy, you know, that beefy richness to it. Mixed with the barbecue sauce, it cut a lot of the sweetness from the sauce down. You got a little bit of vinegar, but it cut some of that down too, and it just was a great beef. It's almost good enough to bottle. So you took you got to your- try if you hadn't do if you don't do anything on this recipe, try that beef sauce. Make up the au jus and mix it with some barbecue sauce. So you went fifty fifty that. that beef au jus with yep. regular the yep. barbecue sauce. So it was like it ended up being like a little over a quarter cup of each. You know, I just kind of eyeballed it, it put had it in a, a squirt bottle. It had a perfect consistency, the, you know. It was really good. Like, that would have been good glazing a brisket with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would serve that with beef all day long. So where was that squeeze bottle? Because I was looking for it yesterday. I rinsed it out. Oh, you. I didn't throw it away. No, I'm talking about what was in. I wanted the oh, sauce. Oh, I dumped it out. Uh, it was the barbecue sauce. It was, it, was, it was about just over a quarter cup of the beef liquid, and then I topped the rest off with barbecue sauce in that eight-ounce squeeze bottle. Yeah, so, so that eight ounce squeeze bottle is now gone. It's not in the fridge. No, no, no. I dumped it out, rinsed it. Okay. I didn't want you know. So it's clean gone. It yeah, it's gone. I can make some more of that like today. <laughs> Need some? That's nothing. It was really good. I was looking for it. Yeah, all that is boiling water and adding those concentrates to it. So you did pulled. Uh, you did a pulled beef sandwich with a jalapeno 
Pepperidge Fall. Yes. How'd you do that? Um, onion bun. I love the onion, Pepperidge Farm onion bun. Yeah, especially for a, beef. Yeah, they got a lot of good flavor. So I took that onion roll and toasted it in the oven a little bit just to get it, you know, not warm, toasty, crunchy a little bit. Put a big mound of that uh, beef on it. Hit it with that sauce, that 50 50 azu and barbecue sauce all over the top. Mounded my jalapeno slaw up. Now, the jalapeno slaw, it's a little little bit of work involved in it. It's not yeah. hard. I took, I did this actually right after I put the chuck roast on, so it had plenty of time to sit. But I took one Vidalia onion, one sweet onion, chopped it up, not super fine, just kind of rough dice. And I took one jalapeno and Cut it into I cut it into slices and then I chopped those slices a little bit and threw in their bowl with I the call onions. it a rough dice. Yeah, it's a rough dice on the jalapeno too. That went in a bowl on the stove top. One cup of cider vinegar, one cup of water, one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of salt. Brought that to a boil. Poured it over the onions and jalapeno in the bowl and let it hang out and sit. Kind of like a quick pickle. Yeah, that's what it, that's all it is a quick pickle. So that went to probably about two hours until I wrapped the chuck roast. I let that sit and work on the onions and they were still had a little crunch to them but it was really good texture for mm-hmm. slaw so we took that and drained it and reserved the juice off to the side and i took one bag of coleslaw i want to say it's like a 12, 14 ounce, 14 ounce bag 14 of coal ounce. you know the cabbage with the little shredded carrot in it just coleslaw you get at the grocery store put that in a bowl put the strained onions and jalapeno mixture in there with it and then i took one more fresh jalapeno and cut it up the same way and mix that in there. So you get some fresh jalapeno and some pickled jalapeno. And then you got the onions and the slaw. Then I made up a little slaw dressing, which was a um, quarter cup of mayo, some black pepper, um, a tablespoon of the vinegar liquid that I had the pickles and the uh, onions and the jalapenos in. And um, I think I put about a tablespoon of sugar. That was about that sounds it. right. Yeah. yeah. And, and some black pepper, a tablespoon of black pepper. Mix that up. So it kind of made this quick slaw dressing. Put it over the slaw, and it wasn't really wet. It was, you know, how it still, it wasn't a lot of liquid in it. Yeah. But by the time I let that slaw sit while the roast was finishing cooking, pulled out a lot of moisture, made this creamy jalapeno coleslaw. It was really, really good slaw. It was really good slaw. It was spicy. I don't but, mind that. It wasn't too spicy. But you, but I like the pickleness of the onions and the jalapeno. Because you could tell, like, you didn't bite into a big chunk of jalapeno. But you got every bit of jalapeno flavor in it from quick pickling them and using fresh. And I feel like the using the two different, the pickled and the fresh, gave you a variety of yeah. jalapeno flavor. And this one wasn't like a, a Mexican style coleslaw, or you know, with jalapeno. It was more of a southern creamy coleslaw with a spicy southern creamy jalapeno coleslaw. Yeah, is what it would remind you of. Yeah, it didn't have the cilantro. Yeah, in yeah those it was type great for a beef sandwich. Mm-hmm. Really went good on it. Um, that was it. I mean, it was that was, but man, it was fantastic. I like using that meat and putting it on taco. It's very similar to me in flavor and texture to like a beef cheek. Yeah, if you do it right. Yeah, it is. It and is. you can make those beef cheap tacos. Like that's what I did the next day for lunch. I took me two tortilla shells and I put some of that meat on it, cold out of the fridge, and I smothered it with like um, some Monterey, some kind of Monterey Kobe Jack blend that was in the fridge. Mm-hmm. Two of them in the microwave was like 30 seconds. Then I folded them and did another 30 seconds. And I got them out of the, the microwave and opened them up and just shook it down with like Tapatio hot sauce. Yeah. Man, it was so good. The fat from that uh, chuck roast started cooking out and warming up and melting that cheese. And I hit, man, I was like, dang, these tacos for some old poor man tacos. They, they, that, it was hitting. That beef just right out of the back. Because we, what was left over, we put through it in a, a Ziploc, Ziploc bag. Yeah. Oh, it's good. There's still some in there. I might yeah. go home and eat that for lunch today. <laughs> it's been, you know, four days old now. I I love that po- barbecue pulled beef. You know, it's real simple. Chuck roast is where it's at when you do that. Yeah. Man, so, I mean, now I'm not saying they're inexpensive now because the prices of everything has gone up. But compared to a brisket or, you know, yeah. ribeye or something like that, that chuck roast is way more affordable. And, and when you take the time and cook it and break it down, Put some smoke on it and basically braise it in a beef juice. Miss dynamite. Yeah, I agree. And really good. Michael loved it. You know. Oh, yeah. Kids love it. Was love good. It. it was family really love it. You can. I mean, I've done. You know that not your not your grandma's pork pot roast or whatever. Yeah. It's been years ago. I did that recipe and I did the full blown chuck roast beef stew style. You, you know, did or, like or pot yeah, roast style with 
smoked it Carrots first, did the carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Man, if you've never tried that, you'll never cook another pot roast in the oven again. I'm a fan of the pulled. You like it pulled? Mm-hmm. I don't know what we're gonna do this one with the crock pot. I just didn't want the meat to go bad, and I didn't. It wouldn't. In, I didn't vacuum. We had a, you bought it, a so. two pack yeah. this week to do your recipe. And really, we're just having Mississippi pot roast yeah. in the crock pot. It'd been good on the smoker, but I didn't have time to smoke today. So, um, so what you got coming up? I did say we got some Cornish hens in the freezer. Yes, I bought some. I finally they had. You know, they uh hadn't had turkeys yet at Kroger. They keep saying yeah. they're coming. So I've got, uh, and I saw they had a whole end cap full of Cornish hens. And I had them like, <laughs> buy five, get one free or whatever it was. You know how they do the $5 or mm-hmm. buy five items, you get some kind of discount. So I was like, heck, I'll buy, you know, five of them. Throw them in the freezers. I've been wanting to do that dirty rice Cornish hen recipe. So I'm going to do that coming up. I, mean, I just think that's a good one. Yeah. Then I've also, so I'm having, I'm doing a turkey recipe. Uh, for Traeger, kind of. It's going to be on the Timberline using some of their new pellets that uh, I'm really It's called it. a they turkey sent me blend pellet. They, t- they sent me some of them, so I said, I got to do it. So I'll cook the turkey on Traeger. Tur- Traeger cooks an awesome turkey. So I'm going to do like a butter smoked turkey. Does that make sense if I say butter smoked turkey? Because it's going to be a smoked turkey that I basted butter. Butter basted. Butter basted smoked turkey with the turkey blend pellets, and I'm going to butter that turkey up probably – Brining it, um, doing all the bee stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Brining it, basting it in butter, and <laughs> all that good stuff. But <laughs> this uh, is a, and we, uh, I'm keeping the seasoning simple. It's just going to be like, do you, so do you remember we used to do those um, big turkey fundraisers? And then I would, so I got, I got, I kind of stole it. I'm not steal it. Mike Mills told it to us in a class I took up there. It was like one of the best rubs for, for turkey. Or for chickens, if you're mass cooking them, because he, a, used yeah, he used to, yeah, because he mass, mass cooked, cook, yeah, he mass cooked them. He's like, events. man, just get salt, granulated garlic, and a little poultry herb. That goes on the skin. It'll make your skin beautiful. It's really, really seasoned because you get the savoriness, but you taste the turkey. You taste the smoke. Yeah. And so, what was the ratio? Do you remember? Salt? Half and half with half and half salt and garlic, fifty fifty, and then just like a part of poultry seasoning. Okay. So, like when we used to do them, I would buy the big shaker of. And tomes. you're using garlic powder, not garlic salt. No, right? no, it's gar- granulated garlic. Granulated garlic. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'd it's... buy the big thing from Sam's of granulated garlic, Tones brand. And then they had a Tones, I think it was sea salt or whatever mm-hmm. it was in that same size shaker. So we would dump those in a bowl and then one little bottle of poultry seasoning, which is the bottle is probably about half this maple sugar bottle. Yeah. You know, it's the, they don't sell. Massive amounts of poultry season yeah. shakers. <laughs> but I get it at Kroger, just whatever their store brand was, that would go in there. So it's not a whole lot of poultry season because the poultry season's got the sage and thyme and rosemary and, you know, all those flavors yeah. in it. And so that's what it was. And you put it back in the shaker bottles and shake it all over your turkeys. Well, it makes a beautiful golden turkey. That's so with that and all the butter stuff I'm going to do to it. It's all, gonna the be, all the butter stuff. All the butter stuff. And the turkey blend pellet. It's going to be a delicious turkey. It's a huge turkey because yeah. we had to put it in the brine yesterday. Oh, yeah, it's been brine. It's going to be the 48 hour brine with the bird brine. How much does this joker weigh? 17 pounds. It was like, <laughs> so it was like 17 and a half pounds. It is a monster. It's a turkey. monster. It's what I don't like cooking that, but you can't get turkeys right now. I had to, you know, how much I had to pay for a hundred dollars for this Dugum turkey from Costco. <laughs> like nobody had turkeys in the Memphis area. I've checked all my places. And it's like Costco had them online. They didn't have them in store, and they'd ship it to you. It took them what, three days to get it here. Yep. For come froze, had to let it thaw out, and that was a hundred dollars. It better be <laughs> jam up turkey. turkey. <laughs> yeah, and it better be better than a butterball. <laughs> but I don't know, man. If you're going to do turkeys this year, you better start looking. Mm-hmm. I bet you there's going to be a turkey shortage. I bet there is too. Heard it here first. There's going to be a turkey shortage. <laughs> I don't know. Steve at Kroger told me that turkeys are coming. He just didn't know when. Yeah. You know, you know how the trucking is right now. So, he may be cooking uh, individual little Cornish hens for everybody at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Brush up on that one. How many can we get on a pit at one time? I wouldn't have a problem with that. I like like your own little, yeah. little baby chicken? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can get up in there. Man, it would be. It's not a bad idea. Get the meat off that bone. How many people coming to your turkey party? I mean, yeah. Coming to your turkey party. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, you got your own little baby turkey. Just tell them it's a baby turkey. 
<laughs> this one I got, the drumsticks are bigger than a quart of shit. Yeah. It's a I mean, it's state fair size <laughs> drumstick. I'm kind of looking forward to it. You, It'll um, take it a little longer to cook, but you don't have uh, so much butter on it. It's <laughs> you've been getting into the habit of liking that uh, boneless turkey breast. I do. That's what I want to do. So also for Thanksgiving coming up, I'm going to do uh, a version of that. A boneless, the whole big, the big Texas size one. Um, I think the last year did I do a video on one? I think it's two years ago. I did the Texas style turkey breast. This you did one, one where you have like a Texas style, and then you do another one where you have like a sweet, yeah, crunchy. It's gonna be good. This one's gonna be good. I may incorporate smoke and peanut oil some kind of way. Smoke a fried. Smoke a fried turkey breast. How do you think that'll be? I wanted to say you do it a whole turkey. Smoke a fried whole turkey? Yeah. That could get dangerous, but you could do it. <laughs> I think I'm going to start with the breast, and then maybe next year do the whole. Work your way up. Yeah. It'd be good, though. Man, I'll tell you what, uh, drumsticks would be good. State fair style smoked turkey leg drumsticks and then fry them. Oh, yeah. That'd be real good. I got some sides I want to work on. Thanksgiving, it's going to be all about delicious food around the holidays. So I'm going to drop some stuff on that um, coming up. I'm sure TikTok, we've got some stuff planned. Tyler, we've got Heck a few yeah. recipes. I'm going to throw in some different uh, Thanksgiving sides on things, TikTok, too. I've got a couple different dressings or stuffing to some folks. Do you call them stuffing or dressing? Well, I think team it's stuffing di- or team dressing? <laughs> so I think stuffing is like bread base versus dressings, cornbread base. Yeah. Like okay. that's, that's a good I'm crossing barriers because I'm going to do a bread base dressing. Is that okay? That's fine with me. Do it. I'm excited. I'm excited too. I got a bread based dressing. <laughs> I'm over excited too. I am. I've been thinking about this one. I think it's going to be good. Well, I want to do a pumpkin pie for TikTok. You keep talking me out of it. Maybe that's my own prejudice. I think a fireball pumpkin pie would be delicious. Fireball pumpkin pie. Don't you pie. think it would Heck be? Yeah. Big jack o' lantern pie. It wouldn't be as. Go for it. No grannies. And then you could do something with the whipped cream. Like. Mm-hmm. Some kind of a, yeah, you can incorporate booze into the whipped yeah, cream. What would really you put easily. in it? Like Bailey's or Kahlua or that pine that whipped wouldn't be bad. The whipped vodka and vanilla. Could you do that? I, mean, I would imagine. Would it turn into a cream? I don't know. I, I don't know. Play with that. I don't know. There's people. That, there's people making pumpkin drinks. I guess we could come up with a pumpkin drink. God, how nasty would that be? Yeah. Would you do it? I don't even do the coffee, so I don't, I don't either. either. I don't want all that. In my I'm a peppermint guy. That's why, yeah. like, Christmas time. I my do, but see, coffee. I do like uh, White relay. Russians. Oh yeah, you come up with something along that line where it's something pumpkin spiced and a strong drink, creamy and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I got to work on that. But well, that's all we got today. Is that it? We've already been an hour. <laughs> We're over an hour. <laughs> Have we really? Yeah. Man, I just get going. What else? <laughs> This one felt like it needed to go longer. I didn't even get to try this squid game suck. <laughs> <laughs> and I also had some questions Cirque for you, game. but well, I'll have to. Play uh, the Cirque game? I'll have uh, to ask them next week. Later. All right. Well, we'll be back next week. Uh, is there anything else we need to tell anybody, Tyler? You get out of here. Oh, what sure. about the soup trophy? We didn't even talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting here looking all delicious in a little red bowl. The cracker so we we do have our. Um, is that on camera? I don't even know if it's on camera. Company. We have our company soup, soup challenge soup contest Tuesday, and the winner will win this beautiful soup trophy along with a hundred dollars in bragging rights. The rules are that's it. I don't know if y'all can see it on camera, but it's got a cracker in it. It's got all kinds of vegetables and looks like some kind of beanie weenie <laughs> beanie weenie soup. <laughs> it beanie looks wet. Soup. It looks like, yeah, it looks very wet. Like it's pour out of here. It does look like beanie weenie soup. Beanie weenie soup right there. That's the trophy. <laughs> though. <laughs> the rule is it has to be a liquid based. It could be chilies, it could be a dumpling, it could gumbo, be a gumbo, bisque. bisque, whatever, but it has to be a liquid base and it has to be put in a cup that is given to you. I think I'm going to do the Dolly Parton T3 Miracle Suit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is? Yeah. I want to know. <laughs> My mom used to make that. It is, you're supposed to eat it for cabbage, like a month and you're going to lose like a like, diet cabbage you're soup. You're going to lose like 60 oh. pounds. You eat cabbage soup for a month. And it's not that bad, but after you eat it the first day, you're like, I'm you're not, over it. I remember it being like a whole head of cabbage. It's a bunch I don't of know vegetables. How many cayenne peppers or yeah. whatever? Because it's super spicy and it's all vegetables and water based. And if you eat it for a few days, you'll 
You'll lose some. You're running four eight lines <laughs> in somewhere. You'll lose some. Yeah. It's not a bad soup. It's not that bad. It's just the act of eating it for two weeks. <laughs> well, Tyler. Make sure you guys check out Malcolm's How to Barbecue Right app on Google Play and Apple Store. Uh, has all of his favorite recipes on there as per usual. Or you guys can find it on the website at uh, howtobarbecuerite.com. And chill. If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, you can find him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, TikTok. and of course YouTube at How to BBQ Right. And I am Miss Southern Shell on Instagram and TikTok. Hey, we appreciate everybody hanging out with us today. And we will be back next week, so y'all tune in. We gone.